Would you turn in your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy? The Lord has charged me to speak to you from the 32nd chapter. On occasions such as this, the dedication of a new church, and the charge of the speakers is to give significance to symbols, fact to fantasies, and meaning to messages. It is important that we make sure we understand what the Lord has done and why and how we are to participate with him. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. I'm going to ask that you will follow the practice of Ezra and rise to your feet for the hearing of the word of the Lord. I shall read for you, just follow my direction, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear. O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew as the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right, is he verse 7 remember the days of old consider the years of many generations ask thy fathers and he will show thee thy elders and they will tell thee finally verse 17 and 18 they sacrificed unto devils not to God to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And all the people said, Amen. you may be seated. From this 18th verse is the immediate text. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten the God that formed thee. Tonight's message, upon this rock, upon this rock. Now, Father, speak to us. The word of life. And heal as you sin your word open unto us thy treasuries and cause us to comprehend thy truth in Jesus name amen upon this rock The Church of Jesus of Piqua
has now established a building where they may build the church of Jesus of heaven. This building is not the church. This building is the learning center. This building is the arsenal where you will come to get weapons to fight the adversary. This building is the hospital where you will come to be healed. This building, ladies and gentlemen, is the rapture preparation center where you will, where you will prepare for your flights. But this building is not the church. We identify this as the church to say this is where they who have joined and linked by birth in membership the body under the banner of the church of Jesus of Piqua meets but this is not the church it is important that we understand that the church has to be built and Jesus said upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not win in its battle I'm very concerned as I travel the world to see men and women who are under the Pentecostal apostolic banner know so little about apostolicity. I'm not just talking about what we call standards and traditions. I'm talking about Jesus. Not knowing the reason for our forming. Now as you move today, it's going to be important that you build upon the rock. When we speak about the rock, we speak about the foundation. Nor the foundation can no man lay than that which was laid, which is Christ Jesus. When we speak of a foundation, we speak of the rock that a building is built upon. That rock normally, especially in Ohio, has a foundation that goes down into the belly of the earth. <clears throat> and in Ohio, we build the foundation deep down in the belly of the earth and normally have there in our homes, in many of our buildings, what we would call a basement. If I would take you to Florida, you would see $250,000 homes, $500,000 homes, but you very seldom will ever see a basement. The terrain of the earth does not permit it to have basements. If I take you with me where I have to go next, to Nashville, Tennessee. In Nashville, you will not see basements normally because in Nashville, the entire city is built on limestone. And this stone is so hard that they normally cannot afford to go through it to build a basement. So they build on top of it. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you're going to be in the church, you must build beneath your place of standing. And that's got to be that, I believe, Pastor Stephen said.
you got to go 60 feet. When we consider them, there must be a foundation. The foundation is established according to the environment of the terrain. Listen again. You build a foundation according to the environment of the terrain. <clears throat> In one environment that's going to be very soggy, then you have to be very careful. In another environment where the rock is hard and non-porous, you've got to build upon it. In a foundation where you can dig under and dig through and then come up, you have a more solid foundation. Listen to me. When we speak of rock, we normally speak of what's called a non-porous substance. It is normally considered to be a substance that is non-porous. It's not like a sponge where it is saturated with water and takes the water in. The water rolls off of it. When we speak of a rock, ladies and gentlemen, we speak of the foundation for earthly dwellings. When we speak of Jesus, we have to speak of Jesus the Christ. Because the Christ is the earthly body of God made to weather the storms of the earth. So the foundation, Jesus Christ, becomes the body that enables you to weather the storms of your foundation. <clears throat> Now we're having problems among us because some of us are not building on a foundational stone. To attempt to build a ministry on the prosperity message alone will not get you through hard times when you find out your husband is cheating on you. You can't give and bring that home back together. To build a marriage, uh, to, to build a church on healing lines, both of these I believe in, you see, but not as a foundation. To build a church on healing lines will not be able to get you through the storm when you are finding that you're unable to be promoted on your job because of your sex, because of your color, because of your religion. You have to be on a solid foundation. <clears throat> now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, when we consider here the time of our building, we are building in dangerous times. It is a time of more style than substance. It is a time where our churches take on beautiful characteristics that we saw from television and our choir swings and sways like we saw at the concert we went to and our preachers are gowned in beautiful robes like we saw in the robe book but unless we can comprehend there must be more substance than style anybody can have style but there's got to be substance Considering the text that is before us, the Bible tells us we have entered a dangerous time. This is a dangerous time where we have forgotten principles of continuance. How do we continue to be what our forefathers were? How do we continue to be faithful and full of power? How do we continue? I have married hundreds of people. I don't know how many. I have pastored for 23 years and the people that I have been blessed to marry 
and counsel, I do not believe in those 23 years that we have had not 10 divorces. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's not a tribute to Bishop Wagner. It is a tribute to building on a rock. <laughs> You must hear what I'm saying. We must return to the rock to build upon. Now I'm talking about saints. Sometimes when people are married to devils and you are told by somebody, God said just stick it out and hold it, they are giving you bad advice. Uh, you do not apply scriptures that God gave the saints to people who are not saved. So you have to understand that there are some conditions you should have been out of long time ago <clears throat> hear me clearly ladies and gentlemen that requires counseling from the men and women of God who shepherdize you not the people sitting next to you they don't know enough about it they'll tell you say I tell you what I would do well maybe you would do what they're telling you to do if you were married to who they're married to I remember when they tell you I tell you what I do I'm, they're telling you from their experience from being married to who they're married to you got to go to the man of God the woman of God who is over you and you must receive not advice but counsel advice is giving you a persuasive direction based upon one's own experience counsel the word counsel means insight from God so when you deal with counsel when you go for counsel you're saying what does God say about this <clears throat> Now, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to see that advice tells you sometimes the best thing to do. Advice tells you the right thing to do. But counsel uh, tells you something else. A counselor must recognize we're talking about building on a foundation. A counselor must recognize that there is more than two sides to every story. Somebody said there's two sides to this. No, honey, not in counseling, not with two people. There are five sides to every story. There is his side. There is her side. Then there is the right side and the wrong side. And lastly, there's God's side. The right side might be if a person hits you, hit them back. Uh, the right side might be tit for tat. That could be the right side. The right side might be um, if a person uh, uh, comes to you and is angry with you for you to be angry with them. Uh, but that's not God's side. Advice seeks to give you the best, the right side, uh, but not counsel. Counsel gives you God's side. You might be the one that's right and God says hold your peace. That's God's side. So ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at a dangerous time in our life. It is a time where we are building buildings off the foundation. We are not dead center on the foundation. Now the Bible tells us that the foundation that we must build upon, he says that we are to be built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Ephesians 3.20 or 2.20. Here ladies and gentlemen, we must build, notice again, upon the apostles. <clears throat> now, we must return to the apostles' doctrine. Let us remember the scripture records three doctrines.
And the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, there is the doctrine of devils. The Bible tells us in Colossians 2, verse 22, there's the doctrine of men. And then in Hebrews 6 and 1 and 2, there's the doctrine of Christ. Now, the doctrine of a man, you can tell, it's usually named after him buddha confucianism zoroastrianism and uh, those even in protestantism you will see them named after men those are doctrines of men doctrines of devils um, you must be very careful about um, those who are now calling uh, the hotline uh, to get an answer from what I still call a witch trying to find out your horoscope uh, and uh, they just moved uh, on a different line uh, any saint who's calling a psychic hotline uh, come here right now hallelujah 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 you need to tarry all over again I don't care what celebrity they have on there. I listen to me. I listen to what I'm saying. Calling the psychic hotline is the absolute same as calling uh, the witch of Endor. It's the same thing. So that is the doctrine of devils. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, building uh, upon the rock, he says, your first, hey, shut up, boy, I hear you, Lord. Your first must build upon the teachings of the apostles now here's how we come to the apostles doctrine remember I told you in the book of Hebrews 6 verses 1 and 2 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ how do we get the doctrine of Christ the word doctrine means a teaching a faith, F-A-I-T-H, a way of life. That's a doctrine. It is more than just a religious persuasion. It is a way of life. In the New Testament, God often in the book of Acts refers to the apostles' doctrine as the way, the way, the way. And Jesus said, I am that way. <laughs> So the doctrine is the teaching of Jesus. Now listen to me. Jesus tells us, <clears throat> build the church upon the foundation of the apostles. Jesus the Christ taught the doctrine for three and a third years to his disciples and then he commissioned them and sent them out and called them apostles the word apostle means one who is sent not just sent he sent with power and authority so now he says build on the apostles doctrine <laughs> Notice, that's the first thing. Now, the apostles received their doctrine from Christ. When they taught it, the Bible said, coming out of Acts 2.38, and as you continue down about four verses, <clears throat> the Bible tells us, and they continue steadfastly in the, what? Apostles' doctrine. It is synonymous with the doctrine of Christ. Now the apostles' doctrine that you are to build upon is one rock with seven layers. The Bible said the first layer is uh, repentance. The first thing we've got to preach is repentance. You got to hear what I'm saying. I'm, <clears throat> many folk believe that repentance is the thing you do before we baptize you in Jesus name. Honey, you got to repent every day. <laughs> repentance. <laughs> repentance. It is a message we don't hear too much of. We need to repent daily. We are good at telling somebody else, you need to repent. Well, you need to repent for telling them they need to repent. 
so here ladies and gentlemen uh, repentance now uh, repentance is not godly sorrow uh, that's not what the bible says uh, repentance means a change of mind and a change of direction uh, so when you repent you must change your direction uh, not 360 degrees that would turn you all the way around and you'd be in the same direction you turn 180 about face you turn ladies and gentlemen and stop going north and start going south you make a turn repentance is a conscious decision to change repentance is a conscious decision to hold your peace repentance is a conscious decision to take off the things God told you he's not pleased with your wearing repentance is a conscious decision to come out of the thing God is calling you out of Re preach repentance a study in that will show you repentance is the first message John the Baptist preached repent prepare ye the way of the Lord repentance is the first message Jesus preached repent the kingdom of heaven is at hand and repentance is the first message the apostle preached on the day of Pentecost repent and be baptized every one of you so you see here ladies and gentlemen we must return to the foundation and return to repentance the second one is faith toward God faith is not uh, uh, just believe and receive uh, or if they just say well Lord you know I just believe that I just believe it no 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 if you're saying I believe God can do it uh, and not saying I believe God will do it you don't believe uh, you believe when you say God's gonna do this thing uh, I know he's gonna do it uh, not long ago they called me at my home uh, and they said uh, it was late at night and they said bishop we've just had to rush one of the brothers to the hospital i, I said what's wrong what's wrong uh, they said bishop his blood has shot so high uh, that he's having a stroke right now uh, and before i could get out the house to get to the hospital they said no 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 you can't come bishop there's no sense is what they were what i was interpreting uh, you can't come because he's in the middle of the stroke right now and he is raging and they've got him strapped down <clears throat> I said, uh, where are you calling me from? They said, we're calling you from the nurse's station of the hospital here. I said, have them connect me to his room. They said, Bishop, uh, the nurses are saying uh, you didn't understand them. He's having the stroke right now. He can't talk to you. I, I said, connect me to the room. Hallelujah to God. About this time, this just happened a few weeks ago, uh, about this time they heard it in my voice uh, and they connected me to the room and the doctors wonder what's going on. They said, this is Bishop Wagner. Uh, he says, oh yes, do what he says. Uh, and they connected me to the room. Uh, lay that phone out where he's having the stroke. Uh, lay it out while you were trying to hold him down and got him strapped down. Uh, they laid the phone. Uh, I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, by the authority that is in your name <clears throat> by the authority that is in your name I reverse this curse I command all of the damage that has been done in his brain for the brain cells to return right now I multiply you I multiply you by the authority of God and command new cells to be born right now. You got to hear what I'm saying to you. Hallelujah. I was away preaching just about a week ago somewhere and while a little longer than that. And while I was away, they said, Bishop, we don't want to tell you this, but one of your preachers, they were kind of talking about you and running you down. And they said, we didn't like this. And he's a famous preacher and he was running you down uh, so I, I don't usually ask folk what folks say it doesn't matter to me uh, so he thought he would volunteer uh, he said
said, Bishop, let me tell you what he said. He said, you are a dangerous preacher by preaching all the stuff you preach. I said, no sense in getting mad over that. I am dangerous. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah, yes. I believe that too many of us are dying because we haven't been taught how to reverse a curse. <coughs> I believe too many of us are living in shacks because we haven't been taught how to give. Come on here and clap your hands to God. <laughs> so the doctors, all of them in the room, and he was comatose, of course, and I prayed and I said, oh, the other saints were praying, reverse this curse. And I began to command the blood to return and etc. Ladies and gentlemen, in about seven minutes or so, uh, a while, I don't know how long, uh, they called me back. They said, Bishop, guess what? I said, I already know. They said, everything is back to normal. Uh, the doctor said, uh, I can't believe this. Uh, something's got to be wrong. Uh, we're going to send him down and take a cat scan. Uh, and we're going to take all the things they do with the brain. Uh, they said, Bishop, should he go? I said, let him go. God wants to be glorified. Uh, let him take every test they want to take. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the doctors have listed it as a miracle. It is by the hand of God. Oh, if you can hear what I'm saying, the curse was reversed. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that's faith towards God. The third thing we got to build on is the doctrine of baptism. We've got repentance, faith towards God. We've got, ladies and gentlemen, the doctrine of repentance. We have the doctrine, rather, of baptisms. Now, the doctrine of baptisms refers to the the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus water and the infilling of the Holy Ghost spirit that's the next one we must teach men and women you must be baptized in Jesus name we must not compromise their soul is at stake hallelujah to God next ladies and gentlemen there is the next doctrine the laying on of hands we must go back to the laying on of hands and transfer authority it comes by the laying on of the hands we were in the church service we were in the church service and we were having an all night prayer service and while when we have all night prayer service you've been to the church many of you and you know the building seats over a thousand people and whenever we have all night prayer service everybody is there it's packed top and bottom all chairs down the aisle everybody stays from 10 o'clock at night to 5 in the morning somebody says you make them stay no they have seen so many miracles happen they scared they're gonna miss something we were there and about three o'clock in the morning God spoke to me and said Norman I was on my knees and we were praying he said Norman get up I got up I just have my shirt sleeves on you know I have my coat off and arms were bare because I rolled my sleeves up we were in prayer and he said get up I got up he said tell Diane I'm going to heal her son today well I said Diane God said he's going to heal your son well her son was born blind ladies and gentlemen in one of his eyes and nearly blind in the other that was 18 years ago and I said God said he's going to heal him today now her son goes to the Cleveland Clinic every so often and they give him a chemotherapy in his eyes I believe that's what they told me it was and they put it I never knew this they put it in a syringe a long needle and they shoot it in his eye and ladies and gentlemen he had to go through this process I don't know how many times a year 
just to try to have partial vision. I, I'm talking about the laying on of hands. I, and so I called him. His name was Rondell. I, he was way in the balcony. I said, Rondell, I, get down to the front. God said he's going to heal you tonight. I, and the church went up in the church that I pastor. They've been with me 23 years. They have never seen me wrong when I said God said. I, hallelujah. So everybody got up said, God, God getting ready to heal here. I, and the visitor said, you sure? I said, honey, watch this. Just watch what God's going to do. I, and while the boy came and they helped him, he got to the altar and we began to worship God like you were worshiping him a little earlier. That's the secret. I, we began to worship God. Then I got ready to pray for him and God said, not you, son. I, I want to show my power uh, differently. Call the last woman who's sitting in the last row of the balcony. I, I looked up there, the woman who's in the last row of the balcony. God said he's going to use you. Come down here. She came down all nervous. This isn't my work. This isn't my ministry. I, I laid hands on her. I transfer the laying on of hands. Transfer authority. Transfer the authority. I laid a hands on her. I, I said, God said he want to use you, not me. I didn't get mad. God used who he want to use, when he want to use him. I laid my hands on her and told her, she said, Bishop, what do I do now? How do I do this? I said, wait a moment. We just got to see what God said. And God told me, strike up the choir. And I struck the choir up. And they began to just worship and began to just praise and began just to exalt and lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God said, send for your wife. I said, dear, God said for you to come. He said, let her be a covenant partner with him. She grabbed his hands. I said, what's next? Lord uh, he said give me seven believers I said give me seven folk the church they charge down uh, God said send them back they are the people who believe I can I want seven folk who believe I will make the blind see right now Hallelujah. After we got that seven, uh, I said, what's next, Lord? Uh, he said, now teach this woman you called from the last row of the balcony what to do. Uh, I went to her. I said, now get in his ear uh, before you lay hands on him. Get in his ear uh, and begin to build faith. Faith has to be built like a monument. Uh, you got to build faith. Begin to tell him, uh, I can do all things to Christ that strengthened me. Uh, tell him. Him. with men this is impossible but not with God for with God all things are possible tell him so she began to do it about that time they laid hands and prayed for him and then God spoke to me he said all right Norman he doesn't call me Bishop Wagner he said all right Norman get over here he said touch him right now I touched him in the name of the Lord Jesus and I, I said I curse the blindness and I call for sight and I connect the optic nerve with its rightful place and the retina to return and to operate in the scheme that God has made. Listen ladies and gentlemen, when I did that and the saints prayed, I don't believe any one man has the power himself. I don't believe that. The saints were praying, all of us. And then I said, in Jesus' name, be healed. And the boy fell back and just was lifeless. They couldn't get any signs of breath or breathing. And the devil said to me, I wish I could tell you I was brave and I was shouting. I got scared to death when the devil told me what he said. He said, Norman, you all are killed this boy. You all done killed him. He was laying just lifeless. Hallelujah to God. God said to me, do you see what's happening? I healed him. I jumped over the pulpit, over the altar, put a microphone into him, got in his ear. I said, Rondell, Rondell. And he shook. He said, yes, sir. I covered the eye that he had partial sight. I said, what do you see? He said, I see one finger. I said, what do you see now? He said, I see two. I said, what do you see now? He said, three. Then I put up. 
I put up four fingers, but I don't know what he saw then because the whole church went up rejoicing before the Lord. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me hurry along here. Let me hurry along. Uh, so you will see that's the laying on of hands. Uh, you, that is the power that you have. Uh, we must return to that. Then there is next the resurrection of the dead. Uh, that is the mystical resurrection being baptized in Jesus name and rising to walk in the newness of life and the natural resurrection. If you die, you will live again. Uh, the sixth one is called eternal judgment that means once God has judged you to be his child you are judged eternally somebody said that you're saying eternal security yes if you walk with God uh, hallelujah to God you will be eternally secure but what I'm really saying is that you will be eternally his you see ladies and gentlemen uh, once you are a son of God you're always a son of God but the problem is you can be a disobedient son of God disinherited son of God uh, and you can be be a disenfranchised son of God so here you must see uh, the last one is called perfection it means completion not just holiness being equipped and complete that's the doctrine of the apostles you are to build upon then he says built upon the teachings of the prophets Jesus said search the scriptures search from the writings of Moses uh, to the writings of John on the Isle of Patmos search all the prophets for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they that testify of me Jesus said all of the Old Testament prophets were talking about Jesus so you must build on Jesus <clears throat> So here, ladies and gentlemen, that's what he means when he says that they were built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. When we look at the dangerous times, God said, tell them to give ear to what I'm saying. Now, in the book of Deuteronomy, the text, and tell them to pay attention to my doctrine. It is as drops as rain. In other words, my teaching, the doctrine of Jesus Christ, will bring a harvest in your life. He says, pay attention. You just can't preach the gifts. You got to preach the giver. You just can't preach, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the baptism in the Holy Ghost. You've got to preach the baptizer. Uh, you just don't preach healing. Uh, you must preach the healer. Uh, and so the concentration of building a church uh, is knowing Jesus. Uh, so he said that's in my doctrine and he says ah, it is like rain upon the tender herb and as showers upon the grass behold I will publish here it is the name of the Lord Jesus it must be published that name why he is the rock his work is perfect his work is complete his work is awesome for all his ways are judgment he has judged everything a god of truth without iniquity just and right is he but the Bible tells us that this generation knew not God. Please remember, Moses is about to die. And notice what has happened. The entire generation has died before him because they did not believe what they heard. So the entire generation died. And when the entire generation died, 
God just took in the teenagers and Joshua and Caleb into the promised land. But God told Moses, we've got a problem here. We've got young people that's going into the promised land who know not God. We've got young people who are going into the promised land and know nothing about the doctrine we've got young people who are going into the promised land and know no difference between Trinitarianism and they know no difference between oneness now why is this before you blame the young people and before you blame the young pastors and before you blame young churches how did that happen it had to mean that they were not taught about Jehovah the generation before them is the one that left them in the mess that they are in when we look at our children today on crack cocaine it is not our children that's in trouble the generation that was before them never taught them about Jesus the God that can crack crack so they know nothing about it <clears throat> And so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the onus is on uh, not the present generation, uh, but the generation that is before them. Uh, that is the state that we're in right now. Uh, we've got a generation of preachers, uh, some of them in their 30s and some of them in their 20s, uh, that do not know Jesus. Uh, they know how to be baptized but they don't know Jesus they know how to tarry at an altar but they don't know Jesus they know how to be water baptized but they don't know Jesus they know how to shock them a soul but they don't know Jesus if you knew Jesus, it would reflect in the way you dress. A lot of folk mix up the teaching on dressing. They try to legislate four inches here and five here. That's not the principle on dress. The principle on dress is the style maker. Where did the style come from? The principle on dress dress um, is did this come out of heaven uh, or did it come out of hell uh, it's not how high it is uh, it's not what color it is uh, but where did it come from uh, come on and listen to what I'm saying uh, we are trying to legislate the wrong thing. Uh, let me give you here something uh, and give a preacher a good text. Uh, over there uh, in the book, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that talks about um, a man called Achan. Uh, when you come to Joshua, uh, God said when you go into the city, uh, do not touch the thing that they have. Uh, it is an accursed thing. He went into the city and he took the gold and he hid a golden wedge and he took a garment that was so fine and so sharp and the style was gorgeous. He had planned to wear the church and he hid the garment. But God came through there and said, Achan must die. I said, why must he die? I, because he took the accursed thing. I, they said, Lord, what was wrong with the gold? I, he said, I told you the gold was to go to the treasury I, for the work of the Lord. I, then they said, well, Lord, uh, why would we kill him uh, over the clothes? Uh, 
the clothes are pretty like those our priests wear the clothes are fine clothes he said but check the label out look at the label and when they looked at the label it said made in Babylon and God had cursed everything that came out of Babylon that's why we don't wear everything where did it come from it's not how it was styled it's where did it come from and so ladies and gentlemen you gotta hear what I'm saying when you look here they were in trouble because the generation had forgotten the teaching of the fathers they had forgotten the importance of why we live holy they had thought it was just old fogeyism they had thought it was just traditionalism they didn't recognize that there was a power that dwell ladies and gentlemen in the way and so he said to them when you get ready to go into the promised land and when you build me a church build it upon this rock don't build it on any other rock build it upon this rock now how do we do it remember the days of old and consider the years of many generation and then ask the fathers ask them why do we do what we do hallelujah they tell me that this elder was the first one you said to preach in your church or in when you began huh in the tent the first one now if God used the words that came from him to bring all of you here ask the fathers oh come on and give God some praise and so ladies and gentlemen he said unto them what has happened they have sacrificed unto devils well well they have sacrificed unto devils great God I hear what you're saying and he said here they have given yes they have given but not to God to the gods of this world he said of the rock that begat thee you are unmindful and you have forgotten uh, the one that formed thee uh, come on somebody uh, and remember the rock uh, don't you dare forget this rock uh, I heard him when he said uh, the rock is Jesus uh, the Bible said here uh, that Jesus uh, he is that rock uh, what rock are you talking about uh, he's that rock uh, that Daniel saw uh, he said there was a rock uh, that was hewed out of the mountain uh, and it became a stone uh, that began to roll uh, and as it rolled it picked up momentum and picked up speed uh, and it crushed everything uh, that got in front of it uh, that rock uh, that rolled through Babylon uh, that rock uh, that rolled through many generations that rock uh, that rolled on uh, and that rock uh, that rolled the Calvary's hill uh, that rock uh, that gave itself to the smiter uh, and allowed men uh, to smite that rock uh, and when they smote the rock uh, as Moses did uh, on Calvary's cross uh, out of the rock uh, came water uh, and out of the rock uh, came blood uh, remember <laughs> A rock is a non-porous substance. How did it get the water in it? We're talking about God that can do anything on another level. Yeah, yeah. If you would just believe God, God can turn this thing around. And so, ladies and gentlemen, you must hear what I'm saying. 
that rock now that says build the church upon me so before I sit down I want to share with you build on a rock everybody build on Jesus build on the truth of the word now hear me somebody God want to use you in this church there are some of you oh lift your hand and shout glory clap your hand and shout hallelujah there's some of you in this church that God want to use to teach the Sunday school but not everybody is cut out to be a Sunday school teacher some of you are cut out with the gift of making money you got a gift to make money and God wants you to use that gift for the house of God you got a gift of administration the church does something wrong when it tries to make everybody an altar worker and everybody an usher and everybody a Sunday school teacher that's why we don't have any money now we got folk trying to do what they weren't called to do turn the business person loose and let them make the money honey or give God a praise you gotta build a on a rock and then there's some of you uh, that's got to listen to this dangerous preacher I'm sick and tired uh, of folk just dying uh, when they don't have to die uh, well you gotta hear what I'm saying uh, you gotta hear me uh, a doctor that we have in our church uh, came to the altar uh, and the doctor um, said Bishop I've got cancer uh, and uh, he went into the hospital took all the treatments and his hair came out and that doctor was to go down for the surgery they said we can't heal him but maybe we can give him a few more months without so much agony and he was to go into the operation on like Tuesday he said now before I go he was just a frail thin man now he said I just want you to give me a pass they said where are you going dog he said I gotta get to the church they said but you're sick he said just get me to the church he came into the church and he got down after the preach word and I came to the altar where he was and I stood there he grabbed the skirt of my robe as I remembered and he said Bishop I just believe if you and the saints pray for me I said great God what are you going to do here his hair was out he was down to skin and bones he was yet going in for an operation on Tuesday we laid our hands on him the saints prayed for him and then nothing looked like it happened he said to me Bishop while you were praying something warm went down my whole left side great God I said God what does that mean he said I just healed him Norman hallelujah to God I said you're healed he said Bishop you know I believe whatever you're saying God he says so should I cancel the operation I said should he cancel the operation God he said no I want his professional colleagues uh, to see my glory. Uh, I said, God said, no, sir. Uh, he wants your professional colleagues uh, to see his glory. Uh, go on in and let them open you up. Uh, he got in the hospital. Uh, they opened him up on that Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, he called me back. Uh, not the doctors he called. Uh, he said, Bishop, they opened me up and shut me up. Uh, I said, what? What's wrong I, he said they said I am as clean as a board of hell <laughs> hallelujah you said it couldn't be done it means you don't know God you gotta know God today is there anybody here 
don't want to be dangerous and you want God to use you build on this rock and use the power that's in your hand stop being a jelly back stand upon the truth of God and operate in the principles of God stop backing up and begin to get out of where you are and tell the Lord I believe I'm anointed hallelujah I really believe I believe that I'm anointed I can't explain why and I don't know how 